a devising government, it's not a crime. And today, I hope and trust that we are not going to commit a crime. Who advise government at this press briefing? We are going to advise government on road shedding. I remember very well when President Akainde Ichirema held the press briefing at State House. I remember PZ and Hope from Hot FM. They went to interview President Akainde Ichirema and he promised us that uh, Hope, two months or so, we have finished uh, road shedding. So today, we are experiencing, Mr. President, three days, four days of road shedding. And this is the road shedding which the President promised us that uh, we have dealt with road shedding. We have seen the Vice President of this country, Honorable Mutare Narumango, coming to the people again saying the reason why we are having road shedding it's because of PF. And we are wondering, why PF? Because the president told the people of Zambia that uh, we have managed to handle road shedding. The vice president, she comes, she's telling us that uh, why we are having road shedding is because of PF. PF is not in government. The party in government is UPND. And the UPND, they have the responsibility to end road shedding. And President Akainde Ichirima has given us a lot of examples how Zambia can end road shedding. One of the examples he gave us is Dubai. He gave us the example of Dubai. And today, we don't know whether it's the people who are working with President Akainde Ichirima who are failing to implement Akainde Ichirima, Ichirima's policies. Today, we are wondering why President Akainde Ichilema, his words and deeds are two different things. We don't know whether the technocrats they have failed Akainde Ichilema or not. Mr. Akainde Ichilema, my president, the president of the Republic of Zambia, we want to advise you one thing that uh, you have a team which is not helping you. The group of people you have, they are not helping you. Your ministers, they don't know what they are doing. Your ministers are very blank. They don't know what they are doing. We want to advise you to fire some of your ministers. There are issues at Ministry of Health. We expect you, Mr. President, to get rid of Madam Sylvia Masebo. Because all of us, even the baby, the five-year baby, she can attest to that, or he can attest to that, that the uh, Minister of Health has failed. Transferring a failure, it will not help that minister to take. You have a lot of uh, bike benches in Parliament, whom you can use to occupy those positions. You have the Chair for Health Committee at Parliament, Who's a UPND member of parliament? He is a doctor, and you can appoint him as a minister of health. If you don't want to appoint that minister, that MP, you have young men and women in the UPND who are in parliament who can work as ministers. You have the young uh, Lomio Kangombe, you have the young Kambita. You have a lot of young men and women in the UPND who can occupy those positions. Mr. President, this is the time to engage a lot of young men and women in governing this nation. We want the young men and women to be counted. We want them to participate. We want them to add value to the growth of our economy. Your Minister of Health, then, Madam Masebo, we have transferred from her ministry to the Ministry of Agriculture. The Minister of Lands, I mean, the Minister of Lands is a very sensitive ministry, Mr. President. And we don't need a failure to head that ministry. It's a very sensitive ministry. Why can't you try other members 
of the UPND, or you have got a right to nominate any citizen of this country who can perform in those portfolios. Mr. President, the Minister of Agriculture, Honorable Ruben Mutolo, is a failure. He has failed from day one. And we don't know why you are still keeping the Minister of Agriculture. Mili Mil, Mr. President, it is unbearable to our citizens in Kanyama, our citizens in uh, uh, Ngombe, and even the surrounding, surrounding area here, uh, in Kamanga and Kaunda Square where we stay. I've been interacting with our, our, our neighbors, the people in Kamanga. They have confirmed to me that they are failing to have three meals a day, Mr. President. They have confirmed to me. I interact with them. And the problem is the Minister of Agriculture, who's supposed to be number one advisor on the issues to do with agriculture to you, Mr. President. I don't know why you're taking time to fire the Minister of Agriculture because it's not adding value at all to your governance of this uh, country called Zambia. He has failed. By the time I was a member of parliament, I cautioned Mr. Mutolo to stop exporting maize and millimil to Congo and other countries. Proudly, with a lot of ignorance and arrogance, Mr. Mutolo told the people of Zambia that the policy of UPND is to continue selling maize and millimil to DRC and any other African country. And he told us that we want to uh, treat agriculture as business. All of us, we have treated agriculture as business. That's why we encourage our farmers to grow in access so that uh, when we secure our food uh, reserve for our country, then uh, uh, other produce we can export to other countries. But immediately they came in, they sold everything. And I want to encourage Mr. President, don't waste your time anymore. Fire the Minister of Agriculture. He's not adding any value. Don't look at their faces. They will cost you. Don't look at their faces. They will cost you. I want to salute President, former President Edgar Chagualungu. His Excellency Edgar Chagualungu, he had to fire ministers, Minister of Sports. By then, Honorable Moses Mawele, Minister of Health, Honorable uh, uh, Chitalu Chilufia, Minister Kambwiri, Minister Emelin Kabanshi, and many more ministers were fired by President Edgar Chagwalungu. He wanted to make sure that he fights corruption and also give the people of Zambia the development which they needed. And you can see across the country that President Edgar Chagalung gave the people of Zambia the development they needed. He gave them schools, he gave them hospitals, he gave them uh, health posts, he gave them roads, and many other infrastructure. He gave them. He had to pump in money into agriculture for us to have what we call bumper harvest. We had bumper harvest in President Edgar Chagalungu's administration. It is not that Edgar Chagalungu had no uh, issues in his tour of duty as the president of this country. We experienced a lot of issues. We experienced drought. We experienced floods. We experienced cholera. We experienced COVID. But President Lungu managed to fight all those things as it's giving development to the people of Zambia. 
So, Mr. President, don't waste your time. Fire these ministers. The minister, the minister of energy, now minister of livestock, I don't know why you're keeping him. I don't know why you're keeping him. You can't keep a failure from the Ministry of Energy and you're taking that failure to the Ministry of Livestock. There is nothing that we are doing, Mr. President. We are just creating more problems. Fire those ministers. The Minister of Water. Mr. President, on the press briefing, you told us that where can you have the boho for 500,000 kwacha? Even yourself, we were worried, Mr. President, that you can't uh, drill a boho for 500,000 kwacha. And what, uh, what have we seen? Transferring a minister who was, uh, 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 was in the Ministry of Water, where the boho was costing 500 kwacha, and you bring that minister to Minister of Green and uh, uh, Green Economy. Mr. President, there is nothing that you are doing. There is nothing that you are doing. You are not helping yourself. Fire those ministers. You have got more than 10 ministers you have to fire for you to start performing to the expectation of the people of Zambia. Minister of Mines. Minister of Mines is another failure, Mr. President. He's another failure, Mr. President. Minister of Mine, he was my district chairman for Chiridabombwe and my former mayor for Chiridabombwe. I know him very well. That ministry is too huge for him. What he's doing there, Mr. President, those are the people who cost you in 2026. This is the time you need and you have to make sure that you put things in order. We are saying so, brothers and sisters in Kalingalinga, who are performing their or conducting their businesses as hand to mouth, it is very difficult for them to survive today. The Baba boys and men in Karingalinga and across the nation, they are failing to, uh, to, to, uh, to, uh, to work because of this road shedding. Our sisters in Kamanga, those with the saloons, they are failing to work because of this road shedding. Mr. President, we started as MMD to attend to the future, uh, this for the future of electricity in our country. President Rupia was Banda by then. May so rest in peace. We started by promoting solar geysers because we anticipated what we are experiencing today. We anticipated what we are experiencing today. When you go to State House, State House compound, you find a lot of solar geysers, which project which we started with great president Lupia Bwezan Banda. That project was launched in Mandevu Rally. Some of you, you can recall that. For us to reduce on the overload, of Zesco by reducing and encouraging the people of Zambia to start using solar geysers. We also encourage the people of Zambia to switch off the stoves, the electricity stove to go to gas stoves. Under the president, the late president, Lupia Bozan Banda. When the late president, Michael Sata, came, he pushed on this, and President Edgar Chagwalungu had implemented this fight by opening up solar farms in this country. One of the solar farms is the one which President Aka Indeichrema recently commissioned in Kitwe. It was Edgar Chagwalungu's baby. The other solar farm which we have in uh, Nyukasama at Emphes. It is Edgar Chagwalungu's baby. And many other solar farms which uh, we started uh, constructing under Minister of Energy in conjunction with Zesco. 
So for us, we anticipated this. Being the member of cabinet by then, the issue of electricity it was a huge issue. It was a huge issue. And our aim is, was to subsidize the people of Zambia. Because the people of Zambia, we said they are paying a lot of taxes. And we wanted them not to pay a lot of money for power. So President Edgar Chagualungu wanted to subsidize, and he had to subsidize the power which we used under his leadership. The other problem which we have is CEC. That CEC, it's, that CEC is a scandal. CEC is a scandal. We almost uh, canceled the contract between CEC and Zesco because CEC was stealing from the people of Zambia. And we agreed as government to cancel that contract because CEC is buying electricity from Zesco. By then, they were buying between three to five cents. And they were selling between 11 and 15 cents to the mines. Stealing from the people of Zambia. Stealing from the people of Zambia. And that electricity, some of that electricity, we are just importing that electricity from Mozambique. So we say to ourselves, why are we keeping CEC? Why are we keeping CEC? CEC is not a government subsidiary. CEC is in the private hands. Why are we keeping CEC on the expense of the people of Zambia? For us, we did our part as cabinet, and we were just waiting for that contract to be cancelled. But today, CEC, they are celebrating. They have made a lot of billions. They were about to construct uh, the power station in Kabompo. Another one, if I'm not mistaken, between Nigeria or Ghana. Using our taxpayers' money. So, Mr. President, some of these things, these are things which you can sit, reflect on it, and act on behalf of the Zambians. And that is the responsibility, number one, which we gave you. If you recall very well, the citizens of this country, our colleagues, the media, we told the people of Zambia that IMF is not something that we should entertain as a country. There is no country where IMF has visited and that country stand to celebrate. No country. Each and every country IMF has visited, those countries, their citizens cry. We told you this. We wrote to IMF. Some of you are even laughing. Oh, but man, what are you trying to achieve? What I was trying to achieve is to block IMF from coming to Zambia because I knew that IMF, those boys and girls in Washington, there's nothing that they can offer to our country. I told them that you have nothing to offer to our country. The solutions of our country lies in our hands. We need home-based solutions, not IMF. We wrote to IMF, and uh, it is in the public domain. IMF responded to us. As usual, they failed to answer our questions. They referred us to the, uh, the, 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 our government. We went to, uh, to the Minister of Finance. We wrote to Minister... We wrote to uh, uh, Secretary to the Treasury, Nkurukusa, and up to that, we have not received any response from them, which means even them, they had no answers to give to the people of Zambia. But what we are seeing today, we are seeing poverty increasing in our country. We are seeing poverty increasing in our country. And this is the thing which we wanted to fight. Zambia is a very rich country. Zambia is a very rich country. We have natural resources everywhere, God-given. 
And what we want to do, what we have to do, is just to put our heads together and make sure that we develop this country on our own. This is our country, and we need to develop this country. And it's between you and me. That's all, not any other person. The issue to do with corruption. Corruption is bad. Corruption is bad. It's an evil thing. And when you have corrupt people in the country, you can't develop. You cannot develop. And I want to encourage the president that uh, let us fight corruption as a nation together. Let us fight corruption as a nation together. I am proud Zambian and a proud former government official and I can walk with my head high in the streets of Lusaka, in the streets of Zambia and the streets of Africa that I executed my duty as a government official above board. There is no one who can come to me and tell me that, Bowman, when you are performing your duties as a minister for Copper Belt, minister for Lusaka, you committed this offense. My hands are very clean. Very clean. You may ask me the question, but Bowman, why are you in court? And I'll answer you that, go and see the, my indictment in court and come to me and tell me that, Bowman, you are lying. You committed uh, uh, some offenses while working as a minister. Not at all. Not at all. I'm a very proud former government official. That's why I'm um, talking about corruption with my head and my, my brain and my heart, which is very open, that corruption is bad. Corruption is bad. And we expect the president to fight this corruption with teeth and nail. Whether his people are, are participating in this corruption, let him fire, arrest them, and prosecute them. And we were waiting to see the government officials who are participating in corruption. We know them. We know a lot of them. In Copper Belt, we know them. In Lusaka, we know them. And we know the files which are at the uh, SEC connecting to the current government officials whom they are failing to prosecute. We know what is happening at SEC. We know. And uh, we are encouraging the SEC to perform their duties without getting intimidation from anyone. Let them work the way they, they, they have been working on us. Let them work. They have been coming to cut our gates. They have been uh, arresting us take us to court, to police, or to SEC, and they have found that, ah, but uh, I am a guy, female politics, if the party of a I'm a guy. And it's very sad. It's very sad. So we want to encourage the president to, to fight this corruption and not to engage in persecution. Persecution is bad because persecution destroys families. When you come here, you harass me here with my kids around. My kids they may think there's something that I've done. But in the actual sense, it's just politics. So let us fight corruption. Let us not, fi let us not uh, uh, fight a political uh, persecution. Let us remove political persecution and fight corruption. On that score, I want to turn to region issues. I hope and trust that uh, we have exhausted our situation which we are facing in our country, politically, economically, and also the issues concerning 
other activities. Uh, we have seen also in our country today that when you go to the courts of law, you will find all opposition, political party leaders, lining up to enter in one or one uh, in these uh, uh, courts. One in this court, the other one in that court, the other one in that court, which is not giving us uh, a good picture to the outside world. I want to talk about also the issue to do with um, Edgar Chagwa Lungu. Edgar Chagwa Lungu is a parent to some of us, a colleague to most of us, and some of us, uh, we have got uh, a close ties with President Edgar Chagwa Lungu. The issue to do with Alewe Lelapo, it is not uh, my issue, it's not uh, President Akainde's issue, it is not uh, any person's issue. It's an issue for the people of Zambia. Let the people of Zambia decide whether they need President Lungu to come back or not. It is not uh, the issue of debate. Let them decide. We have seen a lot of people have gone to polls and the people of Zambia have said no. We have seen a lot of politicians who would want to stand as members of parliament and the people of Zambia have said no. It is up to the people of Zambia to decide. It's up to the people of Zambia to decide. And the people are speaking a lot concerning Alewele Lapo. It's the UPND ministers because they are failing the president. They are failing the president. That's why I want to encourage the president to fire these ministers, Mr. President. They are sitting ducks. These ministers, fire them. But President, I have a man who is 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 they are not helping him. It is not enough just to be called a minister. It is not enough. You have to work. And for us, as the people of Zambia, we voted for President Aka Inde Ichirema. We did not vote for Kabuswe. We didn't vote for Kapala. And Moloba Kapala doesn't even know how it feels to be voted for. He doesn't even know. He doesn't even know. That's why if you see his performance, it's below par. He almost fought with a member of parliament for Kalabo because he doesn't even feel how they cast votes in the constituency. How to keep the constituency, the branches, the words. He doesn't know. For him, it was a jackpot to get uh, a ministerial position at a free plate. Very free, without any uh, struggle. He was given Minister of Energy. So the issue to do with uh, Edgar Chagwalungu, let them forget about Edgar Chagwalungu, let them concentrate on how to salvage this economy from where we are today. President Taka in this whole thing is very innocent. The culprits are the ministers. The people are supposed to advise him on agriculture. They are trotting in parliament and the issuing statements which is not helping the country. The issue was supposed to help them in electricity, energy. They are in parliament insulting the villagers that we can't afford to give a feeding station to the people of Kalavo. People of Kalavo, they are people like us. They need these services as well. They need these services as well. Now we have a minister who is not sensitive to their statements. The people of Zambia, they need feeding stations next to their doorstep. So these people, Your Excellency, they are not helping you. And the issue to do with Edgar Chagwalungu let the people talk. Let the people talk. Forget about the de debate on this issue. Let the people talk. 
We are concentrating on non-issues instead of concentrating with issues which can help Zambia to develop. We are concentrating on non-issues at all. The issue to do with the regional issues, we know that uh, us, we engage ourselves in global politics and regional politics. We appeal to the President of the Republic of Zambia, Mr. Aka Inde Ichirema, to address the issue to do with Zimbabwe. The issue to do with Zimbabwe, it's not a Kada issue. It's a very sensitive issue. We saw UPND Kadas in Indola talking about Zimbabwe. Another Kadas talking about Zimbabwe. This is a very sensitive issue. And it's an issue which is bordering our diplomatic uh, relation with Zimbabwe. And we hope and trust that the president will handle the issue of Zimbabwe carefully. And we suggest that uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, working with the President of the Republic of Zambia, to engage the former President Edgar Chagwalungu to be an envoy to Zimbabwe to go and settle these issues. Politics aside, Zambia and Zimbabwe before 1964 we were one. Zambia and Malawi we were one. So there's nothing like Zimbabwe, another country, Zambia, another country, Malawi, another country. We are one country. We can call it that we are a pro the sister province. We have a lot of Zimbabweans here. We have a lot of Zambians in Zimbabwe. We have a lot of Zambians in Malawi. We have a lot of Malawans in Zambia. It's a one country. And this diplomatic uh, relation, it's very important for us to have a sound diplomatic relation with Zimbabwe. And President, former President Edgar Chagalungu is the best person to be a Zambian envoy to Zimbabwe to discuss our bilateral relation with Zimbabwe. And I hope the minister and the president can get this message quickly so that the issue of Zimbabwe, we can put it to bed. The issue to do with South Africa, the South Africa, we want to encourage them that the government of national unity, which they have come up with in South Africa, we pray that it works. Because South Africa is a very strategic country where economy is concerned to this country, Zambia. And South Africa and Zambia, we are brothers and sisters. We hope and trust that uh, the government of the national unity, which has been uh, formed in South Africa, it will work in the betterment for the people of South Africa and the region at large. The happenings in Kenya, the happenings in Kenya and the Uganda situation, it is very regrettable that uh, we have lost lives, especially in Kenya. Young men, they have lost lives. And their call is similar to what uh, our fellow young men and women in Zambia, they are calling government to do. Their calls are very genuine. The young men and women in Kenya, they want their government to provide jobs to them. They are ready to work. They have told the government that we are ready to work. Give us jobs. We want to work. Similar to what is happening in our country. Our young and men, young and women, they have been telling governments that give us works. Give us jobs. We want to work. And it's up to the government to create jobs to the youths and its citizens. So we want to pray that the situation in Kenya, it will be normalized. And we want to urge our youths in Kenya to avoid engaging themselves 
into violence. Their calls are genuine, but we don't want them to engage themselves into violence. There is nothing that can be sorted out through violence. Each and every issue can be sorted out through dialogue, through the round table. And we expect our brothers and sisters in Kenya to explore dialogue instead of violence. And we expect the government of Kenya to listen, listen to what the people are saying.